Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast special edition series where I preview each and every team's 2024 season. And this is going to be the seventh of 30 shows. And this is going to be the Cincinnati Reds, who are optimistic about things this season. Um, so we'll go over the prospect list, superlative, ceiling, floor, futures, and a bold prediction for every team. So without further ado, the Reds of Cincinnati. So their top prospect is Noel V. Marte. He's a middle infielder. Will be in the bigs this year. He's 21st overall on MLB's list. Two, Rhett Louder, righty. He's slated to be in the bigs this year, but is slated to be in the year at advanced. Hey, maybe there's an injury or something. And he's 34th overall on MLB.com. Three, Edwin Arroyo, shortstop. Slated to be up in 2026. He is 67th overall on the list. Um, number four is Connor Phillips. He's a righty slated to be up this year. He is 70th on the MLB.com list. Five, Chase Petty, righty slated to be up next year, 2025. And he is 98th on the list. All right, six, Sal Stewart. Um, infielder, 2026. Seven, Cam Collier, third base, 2026. Eight, Carlos George, second base outfield, 2025. Nine, Ricardo Cabrera, left infield, 2027. Ten, Alfredo Duno, catcher, 2028. Eleven, Blake Dunn, outfield, 2024. Twelve, Ty Floyd, righty, 2026. Thirteen, Hector Rodriguez, outfield, 2026. Fourteen, Lion Richardson, righty, 2024. 15, Sammy uh, Stratufa, shortstop, 2027. 16, Reese Hins, outfield, 2025. 17, Julian Aguilar, righty, 2025. 18, Cole Schoenwetter, righty, 2027. 19, Leonardo Balcazar, shortstop, 2026. 20, Victor Acosta, shortstop, 2026. 21, Adolfo Sanchez, outfield, 2029. 22, Sheng and Lin, shortstop outfield, 2028. 23, Ethan O'Donnell, outfield, 2026. 24, Jacob Hurtabies, outfield, 2024. 25, Jay Allen II, outfield, 2026. 26, Carlos Sanchez, left infield, 2027. 27, Zach Maxwell, righty, 2025. 28, E. Smith, Pineda, outfield, 2027. 29, Nabel, Mariano, shortstop, 2029. And 30, Adam Sermonowski, lefty, 2027. All right, so superlatives. Um, best rookie. Um, I'm going to go with Marte. Um, he's going to be up this year. And he was the prize in Luis Castillo deal. Um, um, he did see some time in the bigs last year, 35 games. But he's still considered a rookie. Um, he had a couple homers. Um, I know there's um there's some uh drama there with Marte, but I do think that um he will overcome that. Um most improved player on the Reds. Um there's a couple guys that stand out for me um for the Reds. And the one player that just needs to get better is Hunter Green. His ERA needs to be under four at some point. It's so much potential. Strikes out a lot of guys. His ERA plus is yet to crack 100. So has to be the year for Hunter Green to step up. Um, most disappointing red. Um, Frankie Montas. He's always hurt. He's coming off yet another injury. He was bad with the Yankees. So that's just an auto pick right there. Um make or break player on the Reds. Um there's a couple that you could point to and say, okay, that guy's in a little bit of trouble. Um and the guy that jumps out to me is Jonathan India. He really doesn't have a spot on this team. 
First base is Christian Encarnacion Strand. Second base is Matt McLean. Third base is Hamar Candelario. And then shortstop is Ellie De La Cruz. So he's blocked. And they couldn't find a trade partner for him. So to me, he's got to make the most of opportunity. So I'm going to say Jonathan India. All right, bounce back player on this team. Um, Again, there's a couple that jump out to me here. And... Um, the person that I am looking at in terms of a bounce back is Tyler Stevenson, who was not good last year. He was hurt. Um, he had a career high in home runs, but that's irrelevant. He needs to be better at like overall batting and his OPS plus wasn't even at a hundred. He needs to be better. So I'm going to say Tyler Stevenson is the bounce back player on this team. All right, is there a Ewing theory on the Reds? Um, I really can't think of an obvious, oh, yeah, um, kind of thing with the Reds in terms of removing a player and they're automatically better. I mean, that was the case with Castillo last year, obviously, and they um, were relevant and in the mix in the National League for the playoffs, but... um. Yeah, there's no real Ewing theory guy for them this year. All right, team ceiling. I think their ceiling is first place. Um, If Green becomes an ace, and maybe they're good enough to the point where somebody's available and they can trade for him. So that's a plus. And Alexis Diaz is awesome, and the bullpen behind him steps up. Like Justin Wilson, Emilio Pagan, some of the other veterans. They have Buck Farmer. Stevenson bounces back. Um, Candelario plays like the guy he was with, with the Nationals last year. De La Cruz continues to play well. Um, Streer's good. And Jake Fraley's good. So, like, and maybe they figure it out with Jonathan India. Maybe they trade him for a pitcher. So, um, and then Marte comes up and is awesome. So, there's a ceiling for the Reds to win the division. Um, their floor. Um, I also think they're the rare instance is that I think there's also a chance they finish in last. Um, I think that you could argue the same with the Cubs as well. But I just think the Cubs, I just don't see Craig Council coming in last. So, um. I mean, the Reds, that scenario, if those guys don't bounce back and um, Montas is bad, Green doesn't improve, the Pirates are better than expected with some of their young guys and Brian Reynolds. So, like, there's, like, a small scenario of the Reds potentially coming in last, but I think it's more likely they come in first than last. I'll put it that way. Um, All right, so some futures. For the Reds. Um, so, National League MVP. I want to see some of these guys' odds. So, I don't see anybody yet from this team on the cheat here. Um, Matt McLean's 200. But where's oh Ellie De La Cruz is sixty five. I missed that one. Um, Cy Young. I want to see where Hunter Green is. Not that I think he's gonna win it or anything. Forty five to one, Hunter Green. Um, rookie of the year. I want to see Noel V Marte's number. He's still technically a rookie. Oh wait, I guess he lost his. Rookie eligibility. I don't see his name on here. Um. So. That stinks. Um. So he's not on there. Um. Manager of the year. 
Um, honestly, Blake Bell. It's number for David Bell. Yeah, he's six to one. He's right there at Council for Manager of the Year. Um, comeback Player of the Year. Do the Reds have anybody on the list? Luis Severino is plus nine fifty. That's the dumbest thing I've seen so far in terms of odds. There's another one I thought was weird too, which I'll get to. Um, but I don't see any uh, um, Reds on comeback list. Um, so win total. Um, let's see what that number is. 81 and a half. Woo! A little rich, but it makes sense. I want to see World Series already 40 to 1. 55 to 1, huh? Why are, why are they closer to the Red Sox than the Cubs in the World Series pecking order? Someone explain that to me. So, if that's the case, then they're the, um, to win the National League, they're probably almost 30 to 1. Yeah, 27 to 1. LCS is probably 13. Oh, I pulled the A all up by accident. Um, the Dodgers and the Braves are minus for the NLCS, which is crazy. So the Reds are 10 to 1 for the NLCS, which is pretty good value. I want to see their number to win the, the NL Central. 4 to 1. Ooh, I like that one a lot. Um, And we did the. Uh, what about 100 green strikeouts? Is that a number? 183 and a half. Um, and then he's 17 to 1 to lead the league in strikeouts. Any reds up there for uh, home runs? A home run leader? I don't see. Oh, Christian Encarnacion strands at 110 to 1 for. Home run. So that's interesting. Um, so my favorite future for the Reds. Um, hmm. This is an interesting one. But. Um, and what's their playoff? To make the playoffs. Plus 180. To make the playoffs. Um, I'm not necessarily going to say that this could happen, but there's a small chance that they're the Diamondbacks slash Phillies of the last couple of years. Them to make the NLCS at 10-1 is actually pretty good compared to the Cardinals and the Cubs, who everybody loves. So I think my favorite future for them is, for, I'm not going to say it's going to happen. That's the whole point about giving out value. Um... So, 10-1 to to make the NLCS, I think, is a lot of fun for the Reds of Cincinnati. All right, my bold prediction for the Reds this year. Um, This is a good one. Um, I think they're going to be competitive in the National League. I also think that they're a team that can improve its starting rotation. And they need they like somebody to go with Hunter Green at the top. I had the Cubs signing Jordan Montgomery, and I think that'd be a good fit. But I think the best avenue for the Reds is a trade. Um, and and somebody who I think could help them. In a pennant race. That I think could be available. Is. Seth Lugo. Of the Kansas City Royals. Um, I don't know if that's the guy. Or Michael Walk is the guy. But those are the two guys that stand out. Like guys on bad teams. Paul Blackburn stands out. Um. I think that a couple other guys stand out on some of the weaker NL teams. Um, but I think it's about time this this particular team who's um, 
season preview we're going to record soon. Um, he is just somebody that is an ace on one team, but this team just needs a complete makeover. And the team I'm talking about needs to blow it up is the Colorado Rockies. Um, so, I think Herman Marquez gets moved to the Reds. That's my guess. I'm saying Marquez comes back around the All-Star break and has a mini audition and is awesome in pitching in Coors Field and on the road. And then the Reds um, get him for cheap. And is uh, right there with Hunter Green at the top of the rotation. So I'm going to say um, the Reds acquire Herman Marquez back to Colorado. Um, I'm going to say Chase Petty, Ty Floyd, and let's throw in a Smith Pineda in the deal. So two pitchers and an outfielder going to Colorado for um Marquez. So that's it for the Reds. Next up will be the Cleveland Guardians.